Well, this is one of the four new machines that Rock has been is introducing here at World of Concrete. But of the four, which is the 170, this 200, the 300, and the 520, the 200 is probably the most uh, that has the biggest wow factor because the 200 is a brand new size class for Brock. It's 2.1 tons, and like all our demolition robots, it has a three-arm system, uh, which gives you downward force, a, a good downward pressure for your hammer for demolition, not only for uh, surface uh, on the floor, but also for walls and ceilings. But what we've done is we've taken essentially the package of its of of a of the smaller unit, the 1.6 ton 170. We've beefed it up. We've added a, a, it's about a half a ton heavier. We've beefed up the arm, the pins, the connections, and we've basically taken the hammer that used to be on the three ton Brock machine, the 280, and we've mounted it on this 2.1 ton machine. And not only is, does that mean you've got a tremendously powerful hammer on just a 2.1 ton machine, but this machine is also able to go through a 31 inch man door. So you're getting, in effect, the capability of our 3.1 ton machine in the 2.1 ton package uh, with the same hammer uh, of that larger, larger machine to go in and absolutely provide tremendous breakout power uh, in interior demolition, for example. So the, the, the secret of a demolition robot is simply that, you know, in many ways, you, you take, when you design a demolition robot, you're, you're, you're starting with a hammer backwards. You, you start with a hammer, the hammer needs a certain amount of pressure, a certain amount of flow, uh, a certain amount of downward pressure when it's being used a certain, uh, a, a very low amount of back pressure. And we design the machines to provide the hammer with exactly what it needs. So you're, the hammer will be operating at its absolute optimum performance the way it was designed. If you would take that same hammer and mount it on a, a skid steer, for example, you, you simply don't get the same performance. You're probably not getting the right flow. You're probably not getting exactly the right pressure you're certainly not providing that low back pressure. You're not getting the same downward force because you're, you're on rubber tires, so you're sort of bouncing on the surface of what you're doing. You certainly can't be effective against walls and ceilings because you don't have the four, demoli the, the four stabilizer legs to give you that solid platform so that you can be doing work overhead, uh, which of course the three-part arm allows you to do directly uh, overhead. Uh, and against walls. Um, unlike a, a, the typical two-part arm of a, of, of a backhoe or a mini excavator or an excavator, uh, that third arm allows you a tremendous amount of flexibility in the geometry of how you attack your work. So obviously you can work downwards, but you can work against a wall, you can work directly overhead if you really wanted to, and obviously because it's a robot, you're you're not sitting in it and having concrete rain down on you. Um, so it, it gives you a tremendous amount of flexibility and, uh, and the ability to reach in areas and work in areas that conventional equipment just simply can't do. So, so in effect, a demolition robot, as its name implies, is built for demolition. And we put, obviously, 99% of them go out with hydraulic breakers. We put crushers on them. You can dig with them. You can put hydraulic rock drills on them. You can put uh, uh, coring drills, uh, core drills on them, and, uh, and that sort of, uh, I mean, in a whole wide range of other attachments.